Thank you for joining us today in our event, which is dedicated to the U.S. Independence Day. We are happy to see all of you. My name is Sultanat. I am coordinator from North Sultan, American Corner Coordinator, and Timur from Pavladar uh, will host this event. Also, U.S. Embassy North Sultan Assistant Cultural Affairs Officer, Mr. Lance Erickson, will lead us through the history of 1st of July today. Um, so I'd like to inform you, please turn off your microphone, and then be active, it's very important. And also I'd like to inform you that this meeting will be recorded. Let's have a fun. Mr. Erickson, please. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Dobre vecher, Kair Likesh. It's my pleasure to be here with you this evening uh, to talk about one of my favorite holidays, uh, which is the 4th of July. Uh, which is the United States' Independence Day. And uh, so we uh, appreciate you taking time to join us. We hope that you'll learn a little bit. Uh, we, uh, as Sultanat mentioned, we want to hear from you as well. So please let us know in the chat uh, some of your favorite aspects of the 4th of July. If you were um, in the United States for flex or some of travel or just traveling, uh, you know, let us know what, you, what your favorite memories of the 4th of July were as well. And so we, we look forward to uh, sharing with you. And then we wanted to make sure that this was going to be fun as well, because the Independence Day holiday is definitely a, an enjoyable one in the United States. And so we are going to have uh, a quiz a little bit later on uh, where people can win some nice prizes from the, uh, the American quarters of the US Embassy. So uh, thank you. And uh, please let us know if you have any questions, Use, utilize the chat box, and we will have time at the end uh, for some Q&A as well. So now just for a little background on the 4th of July Independence Day, um, you probably uh, know this already, but approximately 244 years ago, um, the United States was, was not the United States yet. Uh, this was the date when the American colonies decided that they wanted to declare their independence. And there is some debate about whether this actually took place on July 4th or the date should have been July 2nd. Uh, July 3rd, because there was a uh, lengthy process for when the uh, colonies actually voted, when they adopted, and when they signed uh, the Declaration of Independence. And so uh, the accepted date is July 4th, 1776, and that is the date that all school children in the United States learn as they are growing up. Now, you might say, well, why is this such an important uh, deal for, especially for the United States? And well, so this was the start of our country. This was the beginning of the United States. And it was also when we declared our independence from, um, from England. And some of the things that we, we wanted to emphasize that we included in this Declaration of Independence still are very important and relevant today. Uh, I included some of that information here. Uh, this is very famous and again, in all the, uh, history classes when students in the United States are growing up. These are the things that you learn, that we hold these truths to be self-evident. Um, and probably the, the one thing that, that is ringing so true today is the, the most important thing is that all people are created equal. And uh, so this is something that, you know, the, the United States is not a perfect country. We're still struggling with uh, as a nation ourselves, and this is an issue all around the world, whether it's uh, women's rights or minority rights, whatever it might be. Um, it's one of those things that in the United States, it's built into our Declaration of Independence, that all people are created equal, and we continually strive to try to make that a reality. The second aspect of that is that governments get their power from the people. Uh, they are there to serve the people. They are not uh, there to tell the people what to do. Uh, the people are the ones who, who decide on the leaders and uh, what they will govern and how they will govern. And if there's a problem, that uh, in either two years, four years, six years, whatever it might be, that there are new elections and that the people may decide we don't like the direction this government is going and they can vote in for it, vote a new one. Uh, and so, uh, you know, as you can see, these are issues that are very important all around the world, even today, uh, that the, the founding fathers of the United States were thinking about and they, they found so important that they included that in this declaration uh, 244 years ago. And now one of the, one of the uh, interesting kind of foreshadowing that, uh, that came out of all of this was uh, John Adams, who, who would later become president of the United States, uh, on July 3rd, sent a, a letter to his wife, 
saying that you know this is this is such an amazing event, such a historic event, that uh, future generations will celebrate this event, this Independence Day. And uh, the things that he said is actually how it's still celebrated today, that it's going to be uh, celebrated with, with parades, with games, with sports, uh, with, with fireworks, with illuminations, as he said, uh, from all across the country, from the East Coast to the West, from the North to the South. And that uh, this would be the, the main celebration in the United States in terms of holidays. Uh, that every year people would get, gather together to remember and to, to honor and to celebrate uh, this amazing occasion. Uh, and so it's, it's always interesting to see, uh, you know, how wise the, the founding fathers were when, uh, again, 244 years ago, uh, future President John Adams was able to predict that this was how uh, it would be celebrated across the United States. And so now this is where we want to have a little bit of participation. Um, I know many of you have been to the United States, uh, again, studying or working or traveling, and uh, you know, we want to hear in the chat, uh, we want to hear your favorite memories. Where was the, the best fireworks that you saw? What was your, your favorite aspect of the 4th of July? And for those of you who haven't been to the United States, we wanted to give you a little taste um, where you could see some of the different 4th of July celebrations uh, across the United States. And so this is a very short video from, from Share America. And uh, Sultanat, please let me know if the audio does not work. Hopefully we got all of that fixed. Okay, so that gives you just a little taste of some of the amazing celebrations that take place across the United States. Um, again, we want to see in the, the chat, you know, where you've been, where you've celebrated. Um, if there's anybody who has a favorite city or a favorite location for where they've seen fireworks. I will just give a, a little bit of, of my own personal background on this. Um, having lived in Washington, D.C. For, for many of the past few years, I've had the opportunity to watch the fireworks there. Uh, and as you can imagine, in the nation's capital, uh, it's some very spectacular fireworks displays right on the National Mall. You can see the, the U.S. Capitol in the background, the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, the White House is right there. And literally hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions, gather uh, to enjoy those fireworks and, and to watch that celebration. Uh, when I was younger, I used to live in, in Chicago, and there was a little clip from Navy Pier that you might have seen. Uh, where the downtown fireworks in Chicago, typically there's a week-long celebration in Chicago where every night for a week uh, leading up that they, they would do the fireworks and you would have millions of people coming, uh, not only to enjoy the, the beautiful skyline of Chicago, the skyscrapers, but the, the fireworks which took place right on the lakefront there with, with Lake Michigan. And probably my fondest memories would be when I was a, a small boy growing up. Uh, I grew up in a small town in Illinois and I will always remember how excited we were when 4th of July would come because we would, we would all gather together in the, the local park downtown. We would spend all day playing games, playing baseball, um, running around, having fun. Uh, we would have cookouts. There would be hamburgers, hot dogs, you know, the typical bad fast food that you imagine uh, associated with a holiday like this. And uh, we would spend all day excited, couldn't wait until it got dark enough that we could actually do the fireworks at the end of the day. And 
as a small child, a uh, small boy growing up in the U.S., we, we, have, we tend to have very early bedtimes in the United States. And so this was one of the times when children would actually be able to stay up late and uh, participate and enjoy um, the evening and the fireworks. And we would all uh, find a spot on the, on the park. We would put down a, a picnic blanket. We would all sit there and we would just wait for the fireworks to begin. Uh, and then as you can see, the, the varying levels of the fireworks displays, uh, it would be greeted by whoos and ahs and whoo. It was, it was one of those events that you would enjoy sharing with your family, your friends, uh, that you would get together. And by the end of the day, you would be just really tired and exhausted. Uh, but you would already be thinking, wow, that was so much fun. I can't wait uh, for next year's 4th of July to get here. And so uh, it's one of those holidays that uh, it's really about uh, independence of the United States, but it's, it's a holiday to celebrate. It's a holiday to spend with your family and friends, um, enjoying and uh, remembering, you know, what, what uh, we're most proud about our country. And so, um, again, I hope people will share, you know, where their favorite experiences have been. Um, I've, I've heard that there's fireworks better than Chicago and Washington, D.C., but I, I have not seen them myself. Um, I've heard that Boston is a great place uh, to be, uh, for, especially for that type of a thing. Again, any of the major cities uh, on the East Coast that were part of the original 13 colonies, especially, uh, there's a strong connection to this holiday and a, a lot of efforts go into celebrating this. Okay. Uh, so I have talked a little bit about the history, I've talked about, a little bit about the culture and some of the different uh, activities and events that we, we like to do on this holiday, um, but I know many of you are most excited about the quiz. Uh, I love trivia, I love, love quizzes and things like that, and who doesn't love free prizes? Uh, and so we decided that we wanted to put together this, this little quiz for everybody uh, to participate, to get you involved, and I wanted to include just uh, some sample items uh, that will be given away as prizes. We, we have a um, selection of books that will be given out about the United States, uh, some of the famous photographers, some about national parks, some about the major cities that we'll be giving out. Uh, we also have um, a nice selection of t-shirts with the American Corner logo on it, as well as the, uh, the U.S. and Kazakhstani wings, um, water bottles, notepads, things like that. And so uh, we wanted to give lots of people an opportunity to, to win some prizes here. Um, the way that this is going to work, the question will appear at the top. Uh, the first person to submit the correct response in the chat box will be declared the winner. Uh, we kindly ask that only one winner per household, per family. Um, we don't want somebody to win all of the prizes. Uh, we want to make sure that a lot of people have the, the chance to win those. And we also kindly ask that, uh, that this is for uh, Kazakhstanis living in Kazakhstan, obviously. Uh, I know there might be some Americans joining in from the U.S. side, and um, these questions will probably be pretty easy for you. And so we, we want to make sure that um, our friends and colleagues uh, back in Kazakhstan have the opportunity to, uh, to win this. And so um, you'll see the response will come bouncing in, and Tim Water will be, be tracking, and uh, we will be following up with you uh, through the presentation and at the end of the presentation while we're doing question and answer tomorrow, we'll be following up to get your contact information for the people who win. Um, and for some of, the some of the questions, there's gonna be multiple winners. And so we, we really hope that this will be fun, a uh, good opportunity. Uh, I, I ran this, this quiz by some of our, my colleagues and they said that it, it might be a little difficult, but we hope that there's a, a nice range of easy questions, difficult questions uh, that will make it uh, enjoyable for everyone. So with that, Sultanat, are we okay? Are we ready to start this quiz? Um, I'm thinking of like, what if I will translate what you said in Russian? Because sometimes people maybe don't understand. I don't know uh, what is level Dov of our viewers. So, уважаемые зрители, сейчас будет опрос, который мы обещали провести. Как вы видите по экрану в примерах, сам вопрос будет находиться сверху. Далее вы отвечаете ваш ответ в чат-боксе. Первый человек, который ответил, будет победителем. Сам ответ будет появляться чуть ниже. Один приз одному дому, и в целом победители могут быть только жители Казахстана. Всем удачи! 
All right, yeah. that sounds good. Well, and again, uh, I will repeat that. Udachi, uh, good luck. Iskiset to everyone there. Uh, and let's let's have some fun. So we'll, we'll start off with the first question. So which city was the first to celebrate the 4th of July with fireworks? And for those of you who know your American history, uh, you know there's a, a few cities that were very important at the beginning of the United States, uh, beginning of the 13 colonies. And we'll give everybody a minute or two to submit their responses. I love seeing everybody type so quickly in the uh, on the video screens. Yeah, a lot of answers, by the way. Yeah. Some great. I, I loved. I wasn't anticipating this many. Uh, Good suggestions. And all of them is different. <laughs> They're all different, yeah. I love this. All right. Um, well, we will, it seems like everybody, the, the mad rush of responses has, has subsided there. So the, the correct answer is to Philadelphia. Uh, and so congratulations to uh, whoever got that one correct uh, first. But uh, again, in, in terms of the responses, uh, a lot of you know that um, the original 13 colonies on the East Coast of the United States was were the founding 13 members. And so uh, it makes sense that it would be an East Coast um, city that would hold this. Uh, and I see that, that some people uh, were mentioning places like Rhode Island, uh, where I believe, and again, some of these, these questions, I'll, I'll provide the sources at the end. I believe some places like Rhode Island, where they've had the longest continuous um, celebration with fireworks and different things like that. And the Chicago, thank you to, uh, who was it that said Chicago there? I have to give a shout out uh, to my, my hometown, uh, to Galaxy A10, uh, and everybody else who said Chicago there. So Philadelphia was the, the correct answer for that. And we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll move on to the, the second question. So throughout history, three US presidents have, have died actually on the date July 4th. Name at least one of them. It will be great if you list three of them. <laughs> yeah, obviously. But we wanted to make sure that everybody had the chance and getting all three correct would be very difficult, but um, at least to get one of them. Man, you guys are smart. Maybe these questions are gonna be too easy. Of course, now I'm worried. Are we just Googling them? Hopefully you know these, these, these questions and you're not just searching for them uh, online. Okay. This, this was very impressive. Uh, so, some of the main uh, initial answers uh, were perfect there. So Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and James Monroe. And I believe Thomas Jefferson and John Adams um, both died, I believe it was 50 years to the date after the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Um, and so great job to everybody there, especially to those uh, like Paul Jean and, and people who got all three of them. Uh, very impressive, very impressive. Okay, this one is a little bit more about culture now. So which of these desserts is most associated with the 4th of July? Would it be pumpkin pie? Would it be Halloween candy? Would it be apple pie? 
Uh, so, Mr. Erickson, if they will answer just by the letter, it's okay, right? Of course, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this is making me hungry already, thinking about this. Me too. <laughs> Great job, everyone. Very impressive again. The correct answer, of course, is apple pie. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, pumpkin pie is most associated with probably Thanksgiving holiday, which takes place uh, later in the year at the end of November. Uh, that's when pumpkins come into season and it's uh, very, very famous for that. Halloween candy, obviously, Halloween uh, at the end of October is uh, when you would would have Halloween candy. Apple pie is something that, uh, you know, growing up in the United States, uh, that's just typical 4th of July food. You would go out, you would have a barbecue, you would have hamburgers, hot dogs, uh, things like that. Uh, for dessert, you would almost always have apple pie. And so uh, congratulations to uh, whoever got that correct first. Okay, this one's a little bit, a little bit more difficult. So when did the 4th of July become an official federal holiday in the United States? And we made these multiple choice because obviously it, it would be a difficult date to, to kind of pull out of thin air. I see a lot of people putting 1776, which is when the, the, the uh, declaration was signed. I think people are going to be somewhat surprised by the answer, though. We'll give it just another second here for everybody to, to respond. Okay. It was actually 1870. Um, Mira, <laughs> Mira decided to go with her own response there instead of one of the, the ones that we gave. Um, and so uh, it's kind of surprising that, you know, the Declaration of Independence was signed. It was the considered the Independence Day of the United States. It did not become an official federal holiday where people in the United States would have that day off for almost 100 years. It wasn't until 1870 that was made an official federal holiday. Um, so great job to everybody who, who got that question correct. Okay, now this one is also a little bit uh, of a um, questionable question. And so who was allegedly, again, I'm saying allegedly, the first person to sign the Declaration of Independence? Uh, the hint that's going to make this a lot easier is his signature uh, is also the largest on the document. And as such, his, his name is synonymous with uh, with signing a document. So we even say today that you, um, when you, when you need to sign something, they want, uh, they want this. Wow. Seeing some great responses. My goodness. You know, you do know your American history. Very impressive. We'll give it another minute here. Mira seems to be feeling better about her answer to this one. She's got a big smile. Lisa's very seriously thinking. <laughs> All right. Great job on this one. John Hancock, uh, for people who got that correct. And so um, when you will often hear this uh, in the United States when somebody says, uh, you go in to sign a contract or you sign a document or something. They say, I need your John Hancock. I need you to sign this document because um, the, the rumor is that, that uh, Mr. Hancock wanted to sign the document in such large letters that the King of England could see it from England. And so whereas most of the signatures on the document are their normal size, uh, fairly small, John Hancock wrote his in, in it's almost two or three times larger than everybody else's uh, signatures. And so uh, John Hancock is the allegedly the first person to sign, but he's definitely the one whose his signature is the, the absolute largest. 
All right. Now here's a fun one. We mentioned that hot dogs are very popular. On average, approximately how many hot dogs do Americans eat just on the 4th of July? And as you can see, it doesn't matter what the answer is, it's a lot of hot dogs. We all know that. Whether it's 10 or 50 or 100 or 150, that is a lot of hot dogs. Looks like almost everybody has answered now. Um, I will go ahead and show the response, which will be shocking, I'm sure, to many of you. 150 million hot dogs. And when you think about the United States, the size of the United States, we have uh, a little bit more than 300 million people. Um, but when you think about 150 million hot dogs, that almost equates to one out of every two Americans eating a hot dog on the on just one day uh, of the year, which is an awful lot. Um, if you did the math, uh, how many Kazakhstani, how many hot dogs would each Kazakhstani have to eat? Uh, you know, in a country of 18 million, uh, that would almost be 10, be about nine hot dogs uh, per person on that one day. Uh, so that's a lot of hot dogs. And uh, we, we almost take this to the extreme. Uh, as many of you know, we, we love competitions. Uh, Americans love sports and, and competing. Uh, one of the things that's also associated with the 4th of July are hot dog eating contests, uh, where in many places people will uh, have competitions to eat as many hot dogs as possible in a short amount of time. And I don't know what the latest uh, numbers are for that, uh, but one of the most famous people who, who uh, competes in that is, his name is Joey Chestnut. And I believe his record was more than 70 hot dogs that he would eat in one setting. Uh, which does not seem healthy or tasty. Uh, I don't know how he's able to do that. Um, but again, this is something that's associated with the 4th of July that uh, some people take almost to the extreme, uh, but uh, 150 million was the, the correct answer there. Okay, another easy one here. Which of these beverages would you be most likely to drink or be offered on the 4th of July? And this one is almost too easy. I, I shouldn't even have included it. Yeah, Kira, Beck, everybody is doing it. Yeah, everyone's, yeah, I knew this one was going to be too, Janar, I knew this, this one was going to be too easy there. Salt and that. I, I should have made it, this one a little bit more tricky, but um, it looks like almost <laughs> everybody got it right. Um, it's obviously lemonade. Uh, when you look at these other beverages, eggnog is something that you would be typically drinking around uh, Christmas or New Year's. Uh, it's definitely a winter drink, as is hot chocolate. Uh, obviously, in July in the United States, it's usually pretty warm. It's, it's uh, hot in most places, in fact. And so you would not be having hot cocoa or hot chocolate. And then champagne obviously would be uh, more reserved for something like New Year's celebrations, things like that. Um, and so lemonade is the, the refreshing answer that, uh, that you would find associated with uh, the 4th of July. And one of the things that uh, I am currently back in Ohio right now um, during this, uh, this COVID situation. And so uh, one of the things that I've been able to enjoy is uh, the nice lemonade that's available here in, uh, in the United States and uh, it's a wide range of flavors. You can get everything from strawberry lemonade to raspberry lemonade. Um, just a couple of days ago, I, I had some pomegranate lemonade, which was just uh, really nice and refreshing. So uh, lemonade has been something that I've been able to enjoy since I've been back. Okay, this one's also fairly easy. How many stripes appear on the current US flag? Wow. That is awesome. You guys definitely know your history. 
Now remember, we're saying how many stripes. I am very impressed. I'm also, I'm also curious if, if everyone who's getting all of these questions right, did you learn this in history class in Kazakhstani schools? Or were you flex students and you learned them while you were studying in the United States? Ah, in university. Oh, okay. Everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I think a lot of people know, but uh, I think Ida said that uh, everyone knows. Sadly, not even all American students know this. Um, but yes, it looks like most everybody has gotten this one correct. There are 13 stripes um, on the flag, uh, alternating between uh, red and white. And so this leads into the next question very nicely. What do those 13 stripes represent? Why are there 13 stripes? Yeah, you guys are good. This is doing a great job with this quiz. I hope we have enough prizes that we're going to be able to give out. So many people are getting these correct. That's great. And so it looks like almost everybody got this one correct, uh, that it was the original 13 colonies, the original 13 states. Um, and so today's flag uh, is a symbol, it, it harkens back to uh, commemorate, to, to honor uh, those original 13 colonies. Okay, uh, and some people have already answered this. Uh, how many stars appear on the current US flag? This has changed over time, uh, but currently how many stars are on the flag? This might be every single person getting it correct. Yeah. Yeah, that I think that was just every single person got this one correct. That was 50 stars. Uh, signifying one for every one of the U.S. states. Uh, so great job to, to whoever got that one first. Um, okay, this one's a little bit more tricky. Uh, so the largest 4th of July display in the United States is the Macy's 4th of July uh, display. What city, where does it take place? Some good ideas, some good suggestions. <laughs> Anya is covering all of her bases. Yeah. She's like, it's Washington, New York, and California. Oh, San Diego. I don't know if Galaxy A10 has been to San Diego, one of the most beautiful cities in the US. Colorado, good, good ideas. All right. Looks like we've gotten everybody. East Lansing, oh my goodness, we have a Michigan Stater. Uh, is that Iser? Uh, he must have gone to, to Michigan State. Uh, they're in East Lansing, Michigan. <laughs> All right. Go green and white. <laughs> All right. 
the correct answer is actually New York City, uh, which if you think about it, it's the largest city in the United States. It makes sense. Um, I have not seen that uh, celebration, but I believe that's one that you can actually go online and you can watch online this year. Okay. This might be the toughest question that we've got in the entire quiz. Only one U.S. president was actually born on the 4th of July. Who was it? And I gave you some additional information. Uh, it was in 1872. He was born in Vermont. Um, and should ideally be the most difficult. Now I am, I have a suspicion people may have Googled this one. That was very quick to be getting the correct answer. I'm not sure if that was Adia who had the first uh, correct response there. I think, I think people are Googling this. Baljan, I, that, I had no idea either. I agree, yeah. I would not have known this. This is not something that you know we learn in class, so I have no expectation that uh, that you would either. But even when you Google something like this, uh, that gives you the opportunity to learn something. And so we wanted to. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I read the history of the Fourth of July before coming. Very well done. Yeah, it's always good to be ready. Yeah, absolutely. By, All the right, way, so as, by the way, Lens, I also yes. have my birthday on the 4th of July. Oh my goodness. To more, congratulations on the 4th of July. I'll add you into next year's quiz. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> so everybody who's in Pavlodar, make sure you stop by uh, sometime after the, the holiday and wish to more a happy birthday there. All right, so Calvin Coolidge was the only US president born on the 4th of July. Okay, and then we're going to wrap things up with a Mount Rushmore question. Mount Rushmore is a famous uh, monument in South Dakota. There are four presidents who appear um, and want you to name at least one of those presidents. And Iser, we can check if see if Timur can make that apple pie. That, that might be possible. That sounds like a good makerspace event or activity. All right, we're seeing a, a lot of the similar answers. Okay. Very nice. I think we're getting almost everybody. That's great. And so for like this question, uh, you know, there's four presidents. The, the first person to get, um, you know, one of the four presidents will, will send out a, a prize. So for this one, there'll actually be four prizes. We'll give it just another minute since this one is such a uh, long one. I'm very impressed by the people who are getting all four of them correct. I see several people are even doing it in order. So you must be looking at a picture when you, you pulled it up on Google. Um, so you're getting them the correct order from left to right. It's a good idea to make apple pie to Timur. Somebody right <laughs> Very impressive, everyone. All right. Give it just another minute here. Everyone's still typing. Yeah, so Pavlodar next week for apple pie and lemonade. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Great job on this one, everyone. Very impressive. Uh, it's, it's actually George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln, uh, the four presidents that are, uh, have been built into this, uh, the side of this mountain in, in South Dakota. I visited there when I was a small child. My, my mother's family uh, came from that area, and so we went out and visited, and I can easily say it's one of the most impressive monuments that I have ever seen. Um, it's out in the middle of, of this beautiful nature, and you've got this huge monument um, to four of the most uh, impactful and important presidents in the United States history. 
and it's one of those things that's it's not easy if you go for summer work travel or flex or uh, for university study to the U.S. It's not easy to get to because South Dakota is is kind of out in the um, in the far northwest. Uh, but it's definitely worth a visit if you have the opportunity. And if you can go, uh, the best time to see it is at night when they light up the uh, the mountainside against the dark background, the sky. You can see stars uh, as far as you can see. It's just such a beautiful place um, to to uh, to visit and to see. And uh, the reason that I ended with that question was um, one of the uh, biggest displays this year is actually going to take place out Mount, Mount Rushmore. Uh, the fireworks display will be taking place on July 3rd in, in South Dakota, which means that it will actually be July 4th in Kazakhstan. And so uh, we're trying to get the information available. We'll have that hopefully posted uh, on our social media uh, pages uh, where they are going to be live streaming the fireworks from Mount Rushmore. It should begin around 8.30 a.m. or 8.45 a.m. in Kazakhstan um, on July 4th. And so if you're interested in seeing uh, some of these, uh, one of the, the more uh, publicized 4th of July activities in the United States this year, uh, you could do that actually on 4th of July in Kazakhstan, uh, live streaming from Mount Rushmore. And you can see uh, the fireworks in the background. Um, there's a chance that President Trump will actually be there as well. Uh, but this is a, a really nice opportunity. And if you if you have a connection in some other city, whether it's New York or uh, California or Chicago, wherever it might be, I would encourage you to check online this year because most places, uh, like I'm currently in Columbus, Ohio, and they have a, a huge fireworks display called Red, White, and Boom. But um, due to COVID and uh, social distancing, they're not able to do it uh, in person with people going to the parks. And so it's actually gonna be um, uh, a virtual program this year. And so I would encourage you, if you're interested in checking out the fireworks or sharing them with your family, to go online, visit some of these websites and to, to take advantage of that or watch them on YouTube afterwards, obviously. But we hope that you will, will take the opportunity to, to check those out, to celebrate, and to enjoy. Because unfortunately, uh, the embassy and the consulate this year were unable to do uh, in-person parties as well. The Independence Day is one of the, our biggest events for bringing together contacts, bringing together our friends, our alumni, uh, to get together. Uh, and unfortunately, just social distancing in the COVID situation, we're, we're not able to do that uh, this year. And so hopefully at some point in the future, we'll be able to see you at, at one of those um, again. Uh, but in the meantime, please take advantage of some of the virtual opportunities. And uh, I want to thank everybody for participating in the, the quiz, for taking the time to listen to this presentation. Um, I agree with Iser. I definitely want to go to Cedar Point sometime soon. Uh, it's a great place to spend the summer. Um, but please note, here's, here's where I got the trivia question answers and some of the photos. Uh, I want to make sure that we give credit where credit is due. Um, and with that, I would love to hear some questions. If anybody has any questions, Saltanat, I don't know if you want to moderate. Um, please feel free to submit the questions in whatever language you want. I'll obviously answer in English uh, so that we can practice English as much as possible. This, this is a great opportunity through the American Corners for, for you to, to speak with a native speaker and to practice because we, we're definitely interested in uh, helping provide as much English practice as possible. And for those of you who don't want to stick around for questions, I look forward to seeing you. Uh, part of my job is I get to travel around Kazakhstan quite frequently. And so I, I get out and I get to travel. Uh, I've already been, I think, to 10 of the 14 regions of Kazakhstan in, in the short time I've been in, in, at, uh, in Nur Sultan. And I definitely have plans to get out to places like Uralsk and uh, Petropavl, and I'll be coming back to Uskaman and Samay. Uh, lots of places, obviously, Aktau, I've been several times, uh, Aktube, Atarau, various places. Um, but when I, when I get out to these places, I love having the chance to meet with you and talk with you, uh, whether it's to practice your English or to, to learn more about you and your experiences in the United States. And I'm always happy to take questions. And so if anybody's got any questions, Sultanat, I'm happy to answer those now. Uh, I'm sorry, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Yeah, first of all, congratulations on your independence day on the 1st of July is coming uh, very oh, soon. Uh, yeah, I have actually a vivid memory in the United States, like I don't know, two years ago. Uh, during this day, that was very great to see the people like around us, like uh, cooking barbecue, everything. There was uh, people like gathering 
uh, together and uh, having fun in it. And uh, I have actually two questions. First of all, um, I want to organize the online meeting again on 4th of July. And uh, we, can we now about like online meetings uh, on whatever you have, like on Zoom, I don't know, where can we get information in that to discuss, you know? Uh, what what type of online meeting did you want to have? I didn't. I didn't uh, this kind of speaker. yeah, this, this kind of yeah, yeah. Not to speak to a native speaker where we can hold a conversation with you with other native speakers, you know, on any topics. We uh, yeah. can we get the information about that? Absolutely. I'll let Saltanat um, give you those details. Uh, depending uh -huh. on what city you're in, there is usually uh -huh. a. Mm -hmm. What city are you in? Uh, currently, I'm in Aktobe City. Octobay. Okay, so there is an yeah. American corner in Octobay, and mm -hmm. they should have a weekly English conversation group uh, where there will be uh, either an American who's living in Octobay or somebody from the embassy will come out, or it could be virtual. Um, and so there's lots of opportunities. Uh, it, and Nur Sultan and Almaty, most of our American corners, I think Pavladar as well, Timur can answer, most of the uh, American corners will have a weekly uh, event where you can where you can participate in an English discussion and so uh, you know especially being in Octobay where you may not hear uh, American English every day uh, there's not as many Americans out there uh, it's a good opportunity for you to get together and chat and talk um, and keep that that English uh, level high all right uh, thank you very much I'm gonna do it and uh, look for uh, some other information about this one yeah thank you very much I appreciate it. yeah Bye. no problem Yep. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I would like to add something about our online events. So we can join any event. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter who is the host of the event. It could be um, Astana or Almaty, Aktobe. You can join it. And uh, yeah, Mr. Erickson, right? We have uh, also uh, speaking clubs, conversation clubs every week by different cities. So if you will um, follow us in social media, you can uh, have a, our schedule for the week, which is will be uh, updated so every week. You post it on Instagram, yeah? Yeah, we post it on Whatever. Instagram every Monday. So please follow uh, okay. up. And, um, yeah, I will. I will. Enjoy. Yeah. Thank you for okay. your question. Yeah, yeah and you. I don't know. I don't know when the next time I'll be in Octobay. I was just there not too long ago. We we brought out a uh, music group. I guess it was last year. Uh, we brought out the Tony Memel Band, and we did uh, a concert there in Octobay. It was a lot of fun. We had a great yeah, time. let us know if you come here again. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and Jana, I look forward to seeing you when I come to Petro Pavel. Um, and it looks like in the chat, we had a question from Iser about uh, what I do. And I apologize, I should have given you a little bit more background. Um, so as Sultanat mentioned, uh, my name is Lance Erickson. I'm the Assistant Cultural Affairs Officer at the U.S. Embassy in Nur Sultan. And my job is to help bring U.S. American culture to Kazakhstan. Uh, and so my job entails bringing uh, musicians, artists, uh, famous speakers, bring them to Kazakhstan either virtually or in person uh, to provide an opportunity for you uh, to learn more about the United States, uh, for you to practice your English, uh, or to do workshops on specific skills. Uh, and so just in the past year, we brought uh, several different, uh, we brought a rock group, uh, we brought a, uh, an artist, we brought an author, we brought a journalist. Uh, we're currently working on um, a couple of different programs that promote inclusivity, that promote STEM. Um, some of you may have been aware this past year, we also brought three different speakers from NASA, including two astronauts uh, from the United States uh, and one volcanologist. Uh, she works at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and she studies volcanoes in space. And so uh, my job and my teams, we would bring these speakers to Kazakhstan, travel around Kazakhstan and give uh, Kazakhstanis, uh, especially young people, students, the chance to, to meet and speak and ask questions of these, uh, these, these great individuals. I also work with higher education. And so some of you may have seen me, I, I travel around to a lot of universities talking about uh, studying in the United States, about exchange programs, uh, about flex, about summer work travel, those types of things. And um, so I, 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 I think I, I'm sa it's safe to say I have the best job at our embassy. I get to work with rock stars, I get to work with astronauts, and I get to work with students. And uh, it doesn't get much better than that. And I get to travel uh, all around this, uh, your beautiful country, as I mentioned. Um, 
And so I, I really look forward to getting back uh, to Kazakhstan. I hope everyone is being safe, uh, doing social distancing and doing what you can to keep you and your family safe. Uh, and I look forward to getting back uh, definitely sometime soon. And so I see a, a question there about NASA, where you can find out more. Uh, for any of our programs that we've done in the past, I would encourage you to visit either our American Corners uh, social media pages or to visit the embassy or the consulate's social media feeds. And you can go back and you can see recordings of most of our events and activities. Um, you may also be able to see, uh, often we will do media activities, so you might, might be able to find some news broadcasts uh, that talk about NASA. There was, there was a lot of activities. I know the WE Project uh, did an interview with Dr. Lopez. Uh, so if you look at the WE Project and you type in Rosalie Lopez, uh, it'll come up with her interview uh, that should be available. I believe that's available in English, Russian, and Kazakh, uh, that you can find that. And then for any of our programs, you're always welcome to, to go online um, and check out that information. Or if you've got something specific, please reach out to your local American corner. Uh, Arjan, I don't know uh, where you are in Kazakhstan, um, but many of our American corners, our American spaces actually have NASA clubs. They'll actually have space clubs where you can go and you can participate in different things from like the NASA Apps Challenge. Um, also in Octobay, we had great participation from Octobay today. Um, you can check, they've got NASA clubs, space clubs, uh, you know, various different things that you can go and you can participate in there at the American Corner. And so I would, I would uh, you know, if any of you are interested in more programming and more activities, the first thing I would say is check with your local American space, your American Corner, uh, visit us on social media. And if you have other questions, just feel free to send us an email. Uh, our contact information is available on the website, or again, you can go through the American Corners uh, we have a great network of 10 American corners around Kazakhstan where you can get additional information and find out about these other programs. Okay, and I see one question from uh, Iser there uh, asking about Flex. And, uh, you know, I don't have all the details. Flex is not my, my uh, specific program. Uh, I don't have a, all of the details. What I would encourage you if you're, you're looking at Flex or summer work travel, uh, or university exchanges, whatever it might be, I would encourage you to please be checking our website. Um, if you go to the embassy or the consulate's website, it should have all of the up-to-date information on everything from the programs to when visa appointments will be available um, to when things will start opening up. Because uh, unfortunately, with, with the COVID situation, uh, it's not just a matter of uh, you know being able to get in and get a visa. It's also a matter of are there flights available? Uh, is the program actually open and working in the United States? And from, from this side, I can say, it's still unclear how schools and universities will be operating on the US side. Um, here in, in Ohio, Ohio State University, which is one of the large universities, has already said that they're gonna come back with students in the fall, but it's going to be a mixed format. So there's going to be some online, there's gonna be some in person. Uh, it's still unclear how that's going to take place. For uh, high schools, middle schools, elementary schools, I heard from a friend in Chicago who said that they're going to a staggered schedule where uh, elementary students will go to school for a week and then the following week, middle school students will go. And then the following week, high school students will go. And so it's going to be on a rotating schedule. And so since there's so many programs, there's so many different um, exchanges and different things taking place, um, I could not cover all that and I do not have the, uh, the authority or the information to give you the, the final word on that. I would encourage you to visit our website. Uh, if you have questions, please make sure that you're reaching out to the program, uh, whether it's, uh, if it's Reflex, reach out to American Councils. If it's a visa question or an issue, please reach out to the consular section. That information is available on our website. Uh, they will be able to provide as much information as possible. And we really hope that these programs, these programs are such great programs, Flex and Summer Work Travel, some of these, some are my favorite programs. And we really hope that um, they'll be able to get back up running uh, at full strength again sometime soon. Uh, it's just gonna be a, a matter of, you know, what is it safe to do that uh, for everybody's health? And so uh, please make sure that you're checking the website, check with the consular section and send us emails uh, when you have specific questions. Thank you, Janar, for, for posting the, the website email there. Um, so Najana said, I hope there'll be any college access exchange. You know, there's, there's lots of different exchanges. Um, I don't know about specifically for ecology, but we are doing an awful lot at the embassy trying to promote uh, environmental awareness, trying to promote clean air, uh, which for those of you, um, 
I think Najana says she's up in Petropavl. I don't know what the situation is there, but at least in Nur Sultan and Almaty, uh, the air quality is such a major issue in the winters uh, that that's something that the embassy and the consulate are trying to work on. We'll be bringing in different speakers. We're doing different programs, trying to uh, increase the awareness of these issues and also trying to help bring uh, some experts whenever possible to, uh, to Kazakhstan, whether virtually again or in person, uh, so that you can learn from them. So I would encourage you, Snezhana, to, to uh, check out our website, make sure that you're following our activities, because I know we do have some environmental uh, programming coming up uh, by the, before the end of the year. So, so hopefully there'll be something that would be of interest to you. And the one thing that I will say is, if there's not uh, uh, you know, an environmental group in your city or at your American corner, talk to the American corner or talk to your friends. Uh, there's nothing that says you can't be the one who, who can uh, you know, start a group when it's uh, an issue like the environment or climate change or uh, you know, wildlife protection and against trafficking, uh, things like that. So uh, be sure to check out our, our calendars and uh, you know, if something looks interest, interesting to you, please make sure that you uh, at least give it a chance uh, and try to participate. Also, we have an Echo Club, which is called Echo Club Nur Sultan, Echo Corner Nur Sultan. So we can join this club, participate, and be a part of this. Thank you for your questions, Nijana. And uh, another thing to mention um, now I have like nine contacts of the winners, somebody who was the first in the quiz, uh, but there was 13 questions, so I need more for contacts. If you um, can't write, uh, I mean, write right now, you can just write us to our email a little bit later. I will write it in our chat box. Mm -hmm. If you was the first, please let us know. And um, I need some more information about you. Yeah, we want to make sure the people got the questions right. The, the first people to answer get their get their prizes. Uh, and Alexander wrote about Instagram. Yes, we do have Instagram. Both the embassy and the consulate have Instagram pages. Um, if you go to that website, KZ at Tochka, US Embassy Tochka Gov, uh, you can find the the links to the Instagram pages there. So, any other questions or concerns? or favorite memories of the, the 4th of July. You know, and the other thing that I always like with these activities is the chance to talk to you. And if you've got recommendations on where I should travel, uh, I hope, uh, you know, I would encourage people to include that in the chat as well. Um, you know, I've been, I've been to a lot of places, but, um, Definitely looking at uh, getting, as soon as I get back to Kazakhstan and it's safe to travel, uh, trying to get around the country a little bit more. Or Sultan, not everybody may be ready to go and have dinner. It might be, uh, it might be already time. Whereas I'll be getting ready to go and have some breakfast. Yeah, actually it's a time. It's about the time. Because okay. we've been here like one hour. It was perfect one hour, very interesting. Uh, I saw a lot of comments here with appreciation, all of them saying thank you. Thank you to our participants too for joining yes, us. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, Kopra Ahmed, Spasibo Boshoya, uh, especially, you know, uh, Snezhana, Lisa, everybody who stuck around there, uh, Iser, uh, you know, it's, it's great having this opportunity. I hope you learned a little bit. I hope we had some fun. Uh, and definitely I will be doing one of these again some point in the near future. So I, I look forward to the opportunity to speak with you again. Thank you again uh, so much. Thank you, Mr. Erickson. Have My a pleasure. good day, guys. Uh, Sultanat, can I just jump in? Uh, some of the people did not respond to the private messages. So please get back to us. One of them are Kirill, Shahnur. Um, just please reach out to the Amram Corner Nur Sultan uh, their email or uh, any social media, just wrote, write down, we wrote down your names, uh, but unfortunately we didn't hear back for, uh, from you. So just in case, please reach out to get your prizes. Yeah, and unfortunately I couldn't find some, I think they left our meeting already. And you can always follow up later too. Um. Mm. 
у нас есть список людей. I'm sorry, somebody said in Russian that no, they didn't. Uh, ничего, ничего. У нас есть список людей, всех тех, кто ответил первыми. Если вы ответили первыми и не ответили мне uh, в частных сообщениях, пожалуйста, вернитесь к нам с ответом с вашей информацией, ваше имя, фамилия, uh, почта и номер телефона, контактные данные на почту, которую мы указали выше. Астана uh, собачка amcorners.kz Мне надо перейти туда, да? Uh, да, вам нужно будет обратиться к нам. Скажите, пожалуйста, я не совсем не могу вас найти, кто именно говорит. Возможно, Шах... я уже... Шахнур. Uh-huh. Шахнур. Да, пожалуйста, напишите нам на почту. Uh, по вот этому инстаграму, да? Uh-huh. Можно в инстаграм. Uh-huh. Как вам будет удобно. Uh-huh. А если в чат уже ответили, то можно как бы не писать вам на почту уже, да? Одну минутку. Да. Uh-huh. Кирилл, у меня есть ваши данные. Всем спасибо. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Goodbye.